And now, The Rise Above Show, presented by Roofing.com and hosted by Diego Dante. Welcome to The Rise Above Show, presented by Roofing.com. My name is Diego Dante, and I'm here with Tim Brown of Hook Agency. How are you doing, man? Doing very well. Thank you for having me, Diego. Good, man. You got a new studio set up? I haven't seen you in this uh, setup. Yeah, I actually just switched offices and just kind of like worked on my lights a little bit. I got the green and the blue back here. It's just, awesome, do people man. listen to this or is it they all would be watching it? Oh, we'll get half and half. Okay, well, it's beautiful for those of you who are, are just listening. <laughs> right on, man. And you're coming out of Minnesota, is that right? Yes. Yes, sir. Minneapolis. Cool, man. So for those that don't know who you are, go ahead and, you know, you can tell us Sure. What what Hook Agency does and really what kind of how you got to, to where you're at now, if, if we could start yeah. with that. Sure. Yeah. Uh, marketing agency out of Minnesota, as we uh, mentioned, um, I have done a lot of marketing for all kinds of companies um, and, and, you know, went to school for web design. Um, but eventually I kind of just started to do more and more marketing for contractors and then this last couple of years, we've niched entirely into contractors and and maybe like 75% roofers at this point. So we have a lot of roofing companies that we do uh, marketing for websites, search engine optimization, and paid ad management. Um, I I think I really love, I've really loved the search engine optimization part of it because I think I'm passionate about it because I got my business through that avenue. Like I was ranking for Minneapolis web design five years ago, six years ago um, as a freelancer. And that got me a lot of business. And I basically, I didn't have money for ads. So I had to figure out how to get people to my website and to get customers. And I also didn't have that many connections, to be honest with you. I was, uh, I mean, as, as much as I like kind of joke and put myself out here, I'm kind of an introvert. So that's thus the extra time for the memes. Um, so I, I, uh, I've leveraged that introversion to, to put out content on my website and I've been able to rank it for a lot of stuff that, that is the customers find. And eventually people started to ask me to do that for them. And, uh, yeah, that's kind of the, the quick background, but yeah, a lot of contractors and search engine optimization and websites was my, my biggest background. I hear you're ranking for smartest man in Minneapolis. Is that right? (laughs) Smartest. Yeah. Smartest person in Minnesota. And then we have another, my favorite one is our SEO, uh, our lead SEO guy is ranking for sexiest man in or sexiest person in Minnesota. That's hilarious. So I, it's just a, it's a great just gimmick to explain <laughs> SEO very well because, I mean, he's good looking, but I mean, sexiest person in Minnesota, maybe not, but uh, so, it's fun. That's funny, man. Well, you guys, you know, I feel like you guys are doing a great job, and you, uh, you know, we were talking before the show. You, you know, you guys are really sharp when it comes to SEO, and and um, and and I feel like here recently, the last. Uh, few months um especially i've seen you know we, we we've you've definitely come out of the shadows as like the the meme lord of of the <laughs> roofing world also <laughs> that's it's fun and, to try yeah it's been fun to put out a lot of memes this last couple of months have you seen had is, is there a strategy behind that what's what are you are, do you feel like you've seen <laughs> like an increase yeah. traffic from that what's that look like yeah so, I mean, I am of the mind that you need attention. You need a lot of attention to get a good business development flow and you need the right attention. So the biggest question in marketing from my perspective is who's it for? So for us, it's for roofers. To be honest, I have a very specific customer. I'm in mind, $2 million to $10 million roofing companies that are on the come up that are growing. Um, and that's our biggest audience. So if I'm making memes, even though not every, I mean, most of those memes are not selling shit. You know what I mean? They're, they're, uh, they're just kind of poking fun at stuff. They're poking fun at insurance carriers. They're poking fun at homeowners sometimes. I mean like it, but they're for roofers and our brands on there most of the time. So 
it kind of, it's just another brand impression. And I mean, it's crazy how much attention that that's been able to get for us. That's once again, free. I come from this background where I haven't had money. So if there's a tension that can be had for me for free. And so I'm also encouraging roofers to pursue the meme strategy. And the, a lot of the memes are pretty bad. That's okay. Here's the deal. You know, my friend, Matt, who who's done some stand up, and, you know, we've been friends for a long, long time. Um, he, he just said any attempt at humor is like, it's kind to the people around you. Like if you try humor, like if you try to be funny, that's, that's a gift to the people around you, even if it's a dad joke, you know? So I think like humor is just another way to kind of cut through the noise. And all of us are, all these roofing companies, let's be honest, all these roofing companies on Facebook are doing informational stuff or, or like look at us stuff. So if they can kind of move beyond that a little bit and try to get entertaining, try to do a stunt, try to shoot like, we uh, did videos with a, a roofer in Minneapolis for a number of years. We don't do video anymore, but we would like shoot bow and arrow at, at like siding and stuff like that. That's a stunt, you know, like, um, and try to do funny as part of that entertaining stunts, just that kind of stuff. I just think it would open it up more if people kind of think that way of like, <clears throat> people don't care about what I sell. Like think that way for a second. If people don't care about what you sell, if they don't care about the shingles and the siding as much as you, if, as much as you do, can you break it into entertaining? Um, and the other, the other one is community focused more around your city. Uh, there's a number of roofing contractors I've seen doing like small business spotlights of other businesses in their city, uh, things to do, restaurants, et cetera. You just break it open a little bit um, from just the pure roofing and siding and the, you know, look at these shingle brands. Like no one, honestly, no one cares outside of, of roofing sometimes as much as we yeah. think they do. I think that's interesting because yeah, I think a lot of times there there's no, there's no strategy to what we're post to either what we're posting or, or we're not thinking about to your point, what's the goal of, of what we're putting out. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, what's the, what's the purpose behind it? What's the, what's, what's the end goal, right? So, mm -hmm. um, I, I've, I've been talking to some people who I, I've got a, a friend of mine, I won't name who he is, but he's got a, he's a contractor who's got mm -hmm. a, um, a decent sized roofing company and he's got a podcast. Um, mm -hmm. and, and it's been mainly focused towards, uh, the roofing industry and I told him you could do a lot of things. I was like, I, I was like, I get it because that's your friends and like, you know, the people. And so people are coming to you and they want to hear your input on how you're doing business and stuff like that. I said, what if you were also doing, uh, what if you were also, you made a, a dream 100 list of people in your area that you wanted to do, to do business with. And you said, you know, let's, you think of the, the, the business leaders and, and, the people that are going to be strategic partners for you. What if you start bringing those people in and, and start networking in that way. And then mm -hmm. that way, once you bring them in for, you know, 20, 30 an hour for however long to talk with them, you've developed a relationship with them. And it's not like, Hey, they're going to do business with me, but that's a strategic partner now that mm. you're feeding off of each other. And yep. just, just that, uh, so that's something that he's trying out now and I'm excited for, for, for him and, and oh, trying yeah. this out. But, uh, um, uh, the whole point in saying that is be strategic in what you're putting out into the, into the internet <laughs> it, because yep. it, it's so there, it's so easy to, to go out and start developing those relationships. Um, and, and for you, to your point, you've been able to develop all these relationships in places, you know, before you were able to start putting out ads and before you were able to start doing, um, you know, all these other things because of those relationships. Right. So maybe mm -hmm. I guess what it, 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 asking you now, you know, what are some of the things that, uh, contractors can be doing, you know, on, um, uh, on that business development side before they're able to either mm. start running ads or hire an agency. What are some of the things yeah. that a contractor can start doing now? 
Yeah, I love that. And I that's a really important point you're talking about with that podcast. Like, I think it's so distracting when we, and I did it for the first five years of my career. I was talking to other web designers and marketers because it's easier to talk to those people. And I just think it's, you just got to get dead set on who is it for. And I realized those people weren't bringing me business. Um, so switched, obviously. Um, who is it for is the number one thing in marketing. Okay, so the things you can do now. Hey, everything with networking, for sure. Everything with networking. I say go to BNI. You know, like I, mm -hmm. I didn't even like BNI, but I know for a, a local service provider, that is talking to almost everybody, everyone that's a home, everybody that's a homeowner. Um, that's a huge, what just get out there and network. And, and the other one, social media is really easy. Like even when I just like started my business, I said, I want to, I would make an announcement and say, I'm open for business. I, on my personal Facebook at the time and all of the social media channels, even though I did, wasn't talking to that many people, I just said, I am open for business. Um, I, I'm here to serve. And I used that personal page and everyone that knew me currently. Um, you know, friends and family, is you, you leverage these things. And I think everything to do with social media also ends up leading to referrals. So like, I believe all of your marketing that you're doing now, if you think of it a little bit differently, instead of like, I'm going to put out this video that is a problem with, you know, where the, you know, the, what is the, the valley in a roof? I'm not a real roofer. So, um, the valley in the roof, the valley. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So there's problem that all these people have on their roofs and I'm going to do a video about it and I'm going to get a customer from this. Think about it. Like I'm going to put out this video and I'm going to remind people we exist and be nice and have a good vibe so that when their neighbor or somebody they know needs a roofer, I'm the guy that they remember. So it does matter the vibe. You're not going to educate them all the time into doing business with you, but you will remind people that you exist and get more referrals. So social media, your own personal social media for referrals, um, BNI and other networking groups, and then the obvious stuff. Make sure that your, I think your job sites are your biggest advertisement when you're early. So if you have clean job sites and you use a catch-all and you have anything else going on that's kind of like the yard sign, the the truck wraps, I think of all that stuff as first before digital marketing. Um, I love the Google ads and I love SEO and I love website, but like if your job sites look like shit, <laughs> I think I already said <laughs> shit in this. So uh, if they look like shit, like you're, you're getting one job from every Google lead that you get, right? You're not getting five because ultimately if you have great looking job sites, you get one Google lead and then it turns into five because their neighbors are like, that's the company. They are clean. They're different. It's not just blue tarps. It's looking good, you know? So, um, just anything job site, anything referral focused is always like the biggest thing. And the close rate on referrals is like 70, 80% compared to, and I love them. Google leads are like 30, 30% on average. So then, and then it goes down from there. Like um, other kind of lead sources end up being lower than that a lot of times. So I look at that. Um, yeah, anything with referrals, job site, or social media, I think is first. A couple, th oh, one really big thing we had a we have a rep here. We we actually share the building with a roofing company here, um, mm -hmm. and one of the reps is a really good friend of mine. And when he started, he wanted to get started with. Uh, he he started looking at different BNI groups. Well, he realized like all the BNI groups were there was a roof at each, right? <laughs> so, mm -hmm. um, so what he started doing is he, he literally started his own networking group. It mm -hmm. didn't cost him a penny. Didn't cost him a penny. They just meet in the conference room of our building here. And he just started reaching out to people. I need to have mm -hmm. a plumber. I need to have an HVAC guy. I need to have a, like all the different categories set it up exactly mm -hmm. like a BNI group. Didn't charge anyone a penny, but told them you have to be at the meetings every single week. He brings in breakfast. He does the train, like he'll set up training. So he'll do all the things completely free. 
and mm. he's gotten i mean he's a million dollar producer doesn't knock a single door here in south carolina mm. where it's typically always uh door knocking here because we're a storm market um yeah. So oh yeah i sure said door knocking yeah. <laughs> like how i left out door knocking there's there's a roofer out there just like crawling out of his skin right now that i didn't say door knocking during that initial thing i would it's, totally door knock if i was if i was uh, a roofing a newer roofing company personally so well here's the thing uh i think door i'm gonna get uh, roasted for this but i'll just go ahead and just (laughs) and just go for it (laughs) i think door knocking in my opinion for myself i've been in roofing and door knocking for me was something that i said i was going to do for the first 90 days and i set that goal for myself like i'm not going to go out door knock after 90 days unless it's we get hit by a storm and and so I started coming up with things like, like what we've been talking about, just ways of networking, getting referrals, setting up, you know, doing business development, different ways like that, because mm. I'm just not the guy that likes knocking on yeah. doors. Yeah. Some people love it. I talked to Deshaun Bryant. He's a really good friend of mine. Uh, he loves doing it and he sees a lot of success from it. So it's, yeah. it's all in, you know, what you know and what you, yeah. um, what you enjoy doing. Um, the other thing I want to pick your brain on is talking about the difference between growing your personal brand versus growing your company brand. What are your thoughts yeah. on that? Yeah, it's um personal brand is easier because everyone likes humans and no one likes companies really. Like if you <laughs> you know, it's it, no one's like a track like unless you have the sexiest brand of all time like no one's like oh i love that logo i'm just gonna be friends with them and like all their posts on instagram right like no they don't care because they don't see it as another human being so i find that very difficult and annoying about growing a brand but i find like i i just really push on my own personal thing because it's way easier because people are just like they they relate to you as a human being so that it's just way easier to grow your personal brand. So that's why I do that. If I could, if it was just as easy to grow your, your business brand all the time, I would be pushing, I would, every piece of content would go onto that. It would go onto my, my Facebook page, uh, the, not my personal, um, Facebook profile, but as it stands also algorithmically Facebook, really pushes down the content from brands and really allows the content from personal profiles to, to flourish. So I'm using that because that's what works. I'm just, I'm a pure pragmatist. I I just do whatever works at that time. And sometimes it only works for a year or two, but right now I see the personal profile as being a way to do it. And roofers can use that principle by going into Facebook groups for local communities and having their marketing manager potentially also participate in those communities. Um, I'm training a marketing manager right now at a longtime client and really pushing on this idea. And she's already getting leads like week one. And that's kind of unusual for a marketing manager to just run out there and start generating a lead a day. You know, like that's pretty good. So Facebook communities, next door, getting involved, answering questions, referring other businesses, and really basically tagging the people in those businesses if you can. So that's like being more interconnected, maybe even having coffee with those people and then tagging them. That's a move. You know, you mentioned HVAC, plumbing, electrical. I mean, those companies, the, um, the, the pest control companies, the fencing guy, the What are some other ones that I've seen? Oh, trees, tree trimming. You know, um, there's a lot of things are right. um, Landscapers right around the exterior of the home that just really make a lot of sense for people to be having those discussions. I, if I, if it was me, I would have like three of those, each of those that I'm good friends with and getting referrals from. And I would also, you know, realtors and and insurance guys too. The Matthew Danskin approach. Uh, I was going to say if we didn't system, if we didn't yeah. mention that uh, Matt was going to call us out. So yeah, yeah. I think that there's so many people that are just great referrals, uh, and I think like honestly, that's better than marketing. Everything with referrals is better than marketing. I'm just going to keep on slamming it. And if you're watching this and you're one of our clients, marketing is great. 
it's still, it is good, but referrals are everything. And if you're not doing everything you possibly can do to increase referrals by also referring others, you're kind of doing your company a disservice. So excuse me to get on my soapbox there for a second. Well, let's talk now that we've gotten that out of the way, let's talk marketing and, and talk, um, you know, when I think you guys, you know, from, from what you've said, you know, you're doing a lot of the Google related, you know, ads, yeah. SEO. Um, so go, you know, for the contractors that are listening and watching that, uh, you know, want to learn about this, let's just kind of give it a brief overview of, you know, you, you're searching for services in your area. What are the different, uh, feature or what are the different, uh, categories or, you know, cause different things that pop up yep. they are. And then really like where should contractors be, uh, putting their efforts once you get to that point where you're putting in money mm -hmm. into that. Yeah, absolutely. I just, I think the easiest way to do it is just to like, I look at a lot of Google pages. Like I search things a lot, like every day I'm kind of, I'm experimenting with this. And I usually have like a couple like things I, I search like every single day. And I'm looking at that whole Google page. I'm not, I'm not romantic about which part I'm looking at how it's ordered and what's on each page. And it's like half <laughs> or like one third of it is either ads now or Matt, you know, it's local service ads up at the top are Google guaranteed, which is those little blocks. And it has like a Google guaranteed on it. And it's usually about three. So that's the number one thing. Anything that's towards the top is the number one thing always, right? Whatever Google is pushing <laughs> to the very top, that's the number one place to be. So Google local service ads. And that's not something that you need a marketing agency for. It's really just something where you need to have, you know, all of the, the uh, documentation for your business and you need to share that with Google and you need to have a pretty high rating on Google. So getting really good reviews and then making sure that you share that documentation, you apply and then you share the documentation with Google. So that's the number one thing. And it's basically in order. Um, right, uh, right away after that, we've got Google ads. It's usually about two or three, especially for anything that's like, roofer near me or something like that. You've got two or three ads and they take up a lot of space, but they also don't get as high of a click through rate because I think a lot of people are wise to that and will skip them. So from what I understand, it's about 20% of people, 10 to 20% of people will click those. And then there's a map and there actually is a, an ad within the map a lot of times for these things. So you do, you can advertise in the map and then there's the regular kind of organic listing that some of us, some people skip to the organic spot or the map. Um, I think about 80% of people do. So that's, that's a, you know, I heard somebody put it the way that they're like, would you knock on every, you know, ninth and 10th door and not knock the rest of them? You know, like you ultimately need to be in the organic spot. Um, that's very important. And it's, you know, as you mentioned, it's difficult, but basically you Google what you want to show up for. You look at all the spots and ideally you're on all four <laughs> spots, you know, like three or four. <laughs> um, you're on a lot of spots basically. And there's, there's then at usually at the end of the page, there's more ads. And the more you pay, the higher you are on those at the ad part of it. And um, from my point of view, it's easier to get leads um, especially at the beginning of your company to just pay for it. And that's Google's got us. Google is a giant unfeeling monster machine. That's got us all, you know, like, um, and it's, you know, Tommy Mello says that Google is basically God when it comes to home services. I mean, it's a huge lead gener and, and there's other people in the space that basically say, um, it's the number one lead generation platform. That's kind of putting it in a funny way because we don't think of Google as the lead generation platform. But if there was one, it'd be, you know, it's Google because that's where people are. That's where people are searching the most for home services and roofers. So I want to be on Facebook. I want you to be on Facebook. I want you to, in particular, I like remarketing. So if people come on your website, they should see your ad on elsewhere on the internet and on Facebook 
for the next month. I think a, probably a testimonial or a before and after or both. But a lot of this, it's about intent. What is the intent of that platform? And the intent of Google is generally search, right? So and the intent of Facebook is generally entertainment. So you kind of have to understand the intent of that platform or arguing with your family members about politics or whatever. You know, I don't know what, I don't know what people are going on Facebook these days for, I guess maybe sometimes memes. Um, but you've got the intent of the platform is really important and servicing that intent, right? So I try to service the intent of Facebook with funny or whatever, and you should do that too. You should try to service the intent of why do people go on this platform? If you try to disrupt the intent of why people are on that platform, let's say you're on Facebook and you're like, I think, and I do it, too, I try sometimes too, so I'm not above this, but like, this is what we're trying to do. We're saying, I know that you're on Facebook to be entertained and to maybe even kind of turn off your brain a little bit, <laughs> but, oh, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to, I'm going to educate you. That's like, the worst, man. Yeah. I don't <laughs> want to be educated. I want to be dumb. I'm on Facebook to turn my brain off for a second. You know, so basically ideal scenario is you're, you're servicing whatever intent they're on that platform for. I always tell people that my, one of my biggest, uh, and I was so guilty of this and, and I learned kind of the, by trial and error, but I fell into the trap at first of doing the, um, uh, call it out for an action. Cause I feel like I would do that all the time. Yeah. It, it calls up for an inspection today on Facebook. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um, what I've learned to your point is, yeah, service, service the, I love how you said it, service the intent of why people are on that platform. Mm -hmm. um, you know, entertaining, um, you know, what are the different things um, that that I could put out that could be, uh, maybe, I, I, you know, I'm not crazy, I'm not uh, against the uh, educational pieces, I guess, as much. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I do the, it, I do it, but. The I'm call saying, to like, actions, yeah. I feel like, are the, the biggest things that get uh, silenced by Facebook, I guess, in mm -hmm. my opinion, from what I've seen. Yeah. So um, the biggest thing is, you know, you set, how do you set yourself up as an expert on social mm -hmm. media yep. without having a call to action, without yep. always, you know, needing to, to get something out of people? Yeah. That's kind and of. I a, haven't, I've done very few call to actions in the past like month. Right. But we've mm -hmm. had about a lead a day every yeah, day awesome. on, on Facebook. And I'm just saying like, that's, that's without call to actions. Like, I mean, very few. So the point is, is like just being entertaining or trying to, trying to service that intent, like does lead to people saying, okay, they're the whatever roofing marketing people or whatever, you know, and you're the roofer. That's the roofer that I know, you know, people have a slot for a roofer or two that they know on Facebook. And you could be that slot if you show up in their feed and you don't show up in your feed, their feed when you do boring stuff as much. Right. And I'm, I'm not even trying to be the Facebook expert guy. I'm just saying that, and you can co-opt it and then occasionally do a call to action. You know, uh, Gary V calls that the jab, jab, right hook, right? So you're yeah. jabbing all, you're jabbing all the time. That's what I'd say memes are. And, and, um, a little bit more entertaining content. Those are jabs, 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 because you're being nice and giving them something. And then the right hook is occasionally you can say, Oh, by the way, um, we call that the, Oh, sorry. I was gonna say, we call that the Trojan sandwich. Yeah. It's there the, you uh, go. You've got the, exactly. the bun, the bun, you, yeah. you know, you all your different pieces. Yeah. It, those are your, uh, your different entertaining pieces, your educational yeah. pieces, your your things that people are interact with, and hidden in there, you'll drop one call to action yeah. every yeah, so often. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So. And it's worth it to do that. It's just you can't. So I just see roofers doing that every time they post is like a call to action, like, and that, and you see it because they get two likes or five likes or something like that with their friends liking it, and it's like that's very. Uh, you're not building an audience at least it's hard to build an audience when you're just putting out right hooks all day. Yeah. 
Um, let me ask you two more questions. Yes, sir. Um, let's talk about just brand in, in general, like uh, the importance of having like a unified brand and a brand guide. Yeah. Um, I, I, I watched, uh, I was on the training that you did um, where you talked to some members of a mastermind that I'm in here in Greenville to, mm. with fuel with fueled. And yeah. you talked about, you know, putting together brand guide and all that. So I guess for a small business, talk about the importance of having a unified brand in, in a mm. brand guide that's followed by all. Yeah. I'm, I'm big on the fact that your logo should be consistent everywhere. You should have consistent colors on all your marketing. You should use the same fonts pretty consistently. Um, you should make sure that like, let's say your direct mail and your, your door hangers and your truck all look and feel the same. I think that the reason that that's so important is it's like, if you, if you became familiar with somebody, you know, think about you're, you're familiar, you're shaking their hand, you're, 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 um, friends with them, but then the next day you come on and you have like a different mask on, you know, like you like have a plastic face on, you know, the point is, is like, that's what it's like when you're coming with different colors, when your, your, your truck was blue, your door hangers were blue. And then you show up and all your, your guys have red shirts on, right? Like it just confuses people and it, it, your marketing goes much further when those things are consistent. I'm not like a stickler, like it has to be perfect. I, um, for instance, one thing that I, I do like to mix up is like the colors on, on social posts. Cause I think I've, I've seen a lot of people that are so consistent on those social posts that sometimes, um, there's a, uh, a fatigue that happens. Like I've seen that before. I've seen that before. I've seen that before. So I, I do, there's some flexibility in there for like, let's, let's throw a lime green in there. Let's throw a, uh, you know, let's th th throw a red in these social posts to kind of grab attention and say, this is a different post than the last post. So I do uh, on YouTube thumbnails and social posts, I mix it up, but I basically like do try to stick with the same fonts, try to stick with the same kind of application of the logo um, and the colors and stuff like that on a, on a regular basis. I'm not the brand stickler guy, but I know everything goes further when it's consistent. And my last question is before we get into the, into the personal development stuff is what, so let's talk SEO uh, with yeah. SEO. What's, what are the biggest mis misconceptions when it comes to SEO and really what are, um, I, I feel like a lot of people have, yeah, just false expectations when mm -hmm. maybe they hire out someone to do their SEO and maybe are expecting results yeah. immediately. Yeah. You know, talk a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, search engine optimization is very hard. And if you're a new SEO person and you're watching, let's say somebody's watching this, because I had a, I just did a video where I got, uh, a little bit of like spicy conversation with Dimitri and like I got roasted in the comments by other SEOs. And I, I, I like, I look at them, I look at their LinkedIn. I'm like, you're new, have fun. It's going to be tough. I mean, it's tough and it's tough to set the right expectations with clients too. Um, what I do know is that there are activity. It's not, it's not magic. It's not, it's not, uh, just all these little tiny unseen tweaks that are going to make you shoot to the top of Google. It's pretty clear activities that, um, that you, that somebody needs to be doing on your website, whether it's you, the business owner, whether it's a marketing person in your company or it's an outside agency and it's content. So it's writing content, whether that be in the form of let's say location landing pages or question, common questions that customers have or, or content around your city, like guides and what to do and restaurants and even like five best roofers in city. Like those are, those are ways to kind of move it along, to be honest with you, is just no holds barred. We're going to just do a list because that's what ranks a lot of times for those city um, service pages or service intent because people want lists. But it's the content. That's probably the biggest thing. That's the biggest chunk of effort that's required. So somebody needs to write that content and there should be a system around that. So it's like, 
at least one thing a week going out and it's pushing along. It's just not sexy and no one sees it, you know? So it's, it's something that's like, Oh, that's not on social. So I don't even feel like anything happened. And it's something that does take six, nine, 12. And I, I dare I say it 18 months real. It's real. And it's, and it's basically the reason that people, have had such terrible experiences with SEO companies is those companies don't want to tell them that. And there, and in some cases, those companies aren't doing those activities aggressively. So those are the two things that happen. Sometimes it's, they don't want to tell them that. And sometimes it's, they actually aren't doing aggressive stuff like posting a bunch of content, putting out landing pages, et cetera. And I realize whenever I get technical with this, there's a certain subset of people will say that guy is lying because that's what the brain does when somebody goes into technical. Maybe this is a good sales tip. You don't want to go too technical because <laughs> basically if it goes beyond some, if it goes over somebody's head, they're going to assume you're being dishonest. So I actually try to not get that technical in these discussions because I know it. if you can't, if you're not comprehending it, it almost you know what I mean? And like, that's what the brain does. It categorizes that as too complex and might be not true. So, well, let's turn it this way. If you're yeah. working with an SEO company, let's say you just started, you've yes. only been working with them for a few months. What are different metrics that you can use to keep them accountable mm. and make sure that they're doing their job properly? Yeah. That's a very, that's a perfect question to ask. I think um, there are cheap or free accounts on, on SEO tools, um, that you could sign up for right now and go look at your site. Um, one of them is a refs. That's my favorite one. A H R E F S.com. A H R E F S.com. And then SEMrush is the other one. S E M rush.com. You can put your website into one of these tools and some of the things that should be going up, because there's graphs on there, right? Some of the things that should be going up is referring domains. So that's links that are going to your website. And you you need more links to your website. Most people don't realize that's like such a big piece to SEO, is there needs to be more links going to the website. Otherwise, it doesn't look in, like an important website. Because you can imagine Google's trying to understand which websites are important. And the more links from authoritative websites like roofing.com, let's say for instance, they had a directory um, that if they're going to that, then there's, it helps. It helps a lot. And especially um, websites with authority and that ha that are topically relevant. So referring domain graph going up is really important. And then the other one I look at in the meantime, let's I had, I, hate to wait 18 months to find out that they're effing me, right? So <laughs> um, I also need there to be keywords going up, right? The keywords, so the amount of um, things that you're ranking for. And that's usually a sign that there's, you know, hopefully they're showing you the content that they're publishing, that they're putting out on your behalf. There are a lot of SEO companies, there are SEO companies out there that don't take responsibility for content. In my experience, in the roofing industry, they're going to need to, because no, like no offense to roofers, but like a lot of them don't have somebody internally to write this content. Whereas in, in other industries, they have a marketing manager or they have some other resources. And in, in, in roofing, it's often not the case, especially under that 10 million mark. Right. So if you don't have somebody to write it internally, you, a lot of times people will even say, I'm going to do it. And then they don't. So basically we've just taken responsibility and a good, I think a good SEO company in general, any good SEO company will take responsibility for that upward graph, no matter what, like, what is the, is that, is it going up? So the things to look at are keywords going up and referring domains going up in the meantime, and they should be going up pretty fast. Like I'm saying, if it was, if I had a hundred keywords when they started, it should be to 200 or 500 in the first year. So. The idea is those graphs have to go up way quick because leads don't follow immediately all of these things. Like, um, in my, and I, once again, there's different schools of thought in SEO. 
But from my perspective, if you put out regular content answering questions about key things that you sell, then the other pages do well. Like the 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 selling pages do well as well. And the, the kind of it um rising tide lifts all boats kind of thing. Like when Google sees that you answer questions and that your site has other authoritative content, it will also allow your other pages to do well. Now there's other SEO companies that don't do any blogging and they're not wrong. They're just, a, it's kind of a different style. Um, but in my experience, it definitely helps. And um, a lot of times we're actually going after money making keywords in the blogs as well. So we're kind of doing a mixed strategy of landing pages and um, blogs. Anyways, that's very technical, but it, you know, or it's, it's getting there a little bit, but. No, I think that's good. I think, you know, contractors need to know these things of mm -hmm. how, how do you keep, how do you keep the companies that you're, that you're hiring yeah. accountable? I think it's great stuff. Um, all right, Tim, let me ask you, let's, let's pivot a little bit sure. uh, towards the end of every show. I like to uh, ask a series of rapid fire questions. And uh, th so this is the rise above show. And I started this show so that we could give free resources to contractors, but also you've been to our conferences. You know what we're all about. Mm -hmm. You know, we're about the, the business development and also the personal development. And so I wanted to ask you these questions. My my first question is in the spirit of rising above. What is a failure that you've had either in your life or in your business? And how were you able to rise above from that? Hmm. Yeah. Um, I think I'm going to go life. It's just easier for me. I've failed a lot in life. Um, I, I actually am in recovery. I'm not going to say which brand or whatever, but I'm in recovery. Uh, 12, 13 years ago, I failed in my pursuit of unadulterated pleasure in life. And I tried so hard to make it work, but it didn't work for me. And I'm not very good at the, the substances. So, so um, that failure was pretty catastrophic for me. And that's why I'm sober today. And I'm, um, and it was a, it was probably the best thing that's ever happened to me though. And I, I know that that's not uncommon. Um, and it, it allowed me to pursue, actually, I was already kind of looking at like graphic design and stuff like that when I was in high school, but I just never pursued it because I, first of all, my dad said, that's not a real career. And it, you know, it ended up being a pretty real career for me, but, um, I then went back to school and finished out and went, you know, for web design and started a career and learned to code and, um, learn to market. So being in that position that was basically like desperation um, ended up being one of the best things for me. It was a failure, but it wasn't, I don't think it was, uh, I think it was one of those things that had to happen. I'm very grateful that it did. I love that. I'll, um, I'll say this. We, you know, if, if you're a contractor and you know, you are dealing with addiction. That's something that, uh, you know, you feel like you need help with. We'll drop a link to, uh, roofers in recovery. We work with them a lot and they do a lot of great work in our, in our industry, helping mm -hmm. contractors to send them to rehab and, and, um, or if you want to donate to them, that's a, they have a great cause. So I'll drop their link in the comments. I appreciate you sharing that story, man. Yeah. Yes, sir. Um, uh, my second rapid fire question is, how will you know that you have succeeded in business? Sorry, you're breaking up there for a second. You said, how will I know if I've succeeded in business? Yeah. Um, I think I'll know when I feel the leaders that are on our team are empowered to make good decisions and are em empowering other people around them. And I, I do get glimpses of that now where there's leaders on our team that feel empowered, that are making good decisions. And we have happy customers that I haven't personally, like, <laughs> you know, early in business, you're sitting there every moment, like uh, servicing the, every tiny thing with each customer. And now happy customers are happening without me, which I think is uh, good. But I think it's really about the empowering leaders and seeing them empower other people. 
I love that. That's awesome. My last rapid fire question is what is a book that's changed your life? Mm, I got to do it because it's right here. The old 10 X rule. I know, <laughs> I know that people have different opin opinions on this. People uh, feel sometimes some type of way about Grant Cardone and <laughs> a neg in the negative. Uh, but he, uh, his book, 10 X rule has been very good for my life. Uh, the idea of taking massive action, you're going to need way more effort than you think you're going to need to hit those big goals. And essentially his idea is what if you multiplied your goal by 10 and what would you have to do to hit that goal? All right, make moves on that and uh, how much action you're going to need to hit it. So I think that one was a big mindset shift for me and it's a pretty simple idea, but a very good one. Yeah, that's awesome. Well, dude, I appreciate you hopping on the show and yes, sir. bring in a lot of uh, knowledge. Um, we I, Every time that I get someone uh, where we can do marketing, I feel like we're here for a long time. Uh, yeah. and, and, uh, and it goes by so quickly cause I just can talk about it all day. And, uh, so I appreciate it when other people are just equally as excited. <laughs> so, yes, uh, sir. so if you've tuned in and you've watched or listened to the entire show, we really appreciate you and we're going to sign off. Um, Tim, I'll let you, before we sign off, I'll just say, you know, what, uh, if someone wants to connect with you, what's the best place that they can go to connect with you? Sure. Check out our stuff at hookagency.com, hook agency all over social, or uh, just connect with me on Facebook. It's facebook.com slash invigorated. Facebook.com slash invigorated. Sweet. Well, we appreciate you, and we'll catch you guys next time on the next episode of The Rise Above, presented by Roof.com. Peace out. <laughs>